Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Rav and today we are going to go over my tips for working in Japan. Congratulations, you got the job, you're coming to Japan, what's next? From my experience, I had a really tough first year working in Japan. It was so tough. I wanted to quit so many times, but in the end, I stuck it out. As of now, six years later, I'm still here. So, how did I get through it? Here are some tips on how to get through at least your first year in Japan. Tip number one, ask questions. If you don't know something, it's okay, ask. No one's gonna hate you for asking a question. It's better to ask and make a mistake than to make a mistake and pay for it later. You're going to come across things that you don't know and you want to know so that it makes your job easier in the long run. For teaching, if you want to explain something in more simple words and a easier visual way to, to show it, you might want to ask your fellow teachers. They might have already gone through this. If they don't know, then you can work together to do it. Tip number two, be flexible. And I don't mean be flexible with your body. I mean be flexible with your time. Be willing to put in a little extra time to help out around the, the workplace. If you are willing to do a little extra around the workplace, it will show that you care about the job. And a little bit goes a long way. Helping another coworker with their project or helping another teacher with their student, that all comes around because if you help them, they will help you. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. That kind of deal. Tip number three, follow the rules. And of course, it's really obvious, you wanna follow the rules so you don't lose your job and end up being sent back home. No, you follow the rules so that it will just go a whole lot smoother. If you try to do things your way and it's your way or the highway, it's not gonna work out very well because then if it's your way and your manager's way, then you're just gonna keep fighting each other. And then you're, everyone's gonna have a bad time. And you don't want that because it's just gonna build up a whole lot of stress, St unneeded stress, because already you're stressed out from living in another country where you probably don't understand a lick of Japanese and it's already really difficult to just go buy groceries. So to avoid unnecessary conflict, just be ready to yes sir, yes ma'am, your way through and just be willing to listen while you're at it. And just try to be as you're told, even if you don't like it, just do it because if you don't do it, then it looks bad and then the higher ups are not gonna like that. Tip number four, know your resources. Know what's in your toolkit so that you are prepared for something that might come up. Know what books, what cards, what activities, anything. Always have a backup plan and be ready to pull something out at the last minute because you never know when your manager might ask you to do something completely out of the blue. For teachers, this is especially great for when it comes to thinking of fun things for your students to do, especially with kids. They might think that the, your first plan is like really lame. So then, like I said, have a backup plan, have a backup activity or way of explaining something that is a little bit more fun and intuitive so that it's a lot more fun and they're gonna enjoy being in your class. Tip number five, slower, simpler, clearer. One thing you always have to remember is that English is the second language of the people that you work with or the people that you're teaching. They might not understand everything that you're saying. So speak slowly, use more simple words, and speak clearly. Over my time of teaching, I have gotten used to speaking in a so much clearer and slower way to make sure that my students can understand every single word that I'm saying. If you start talking like you are with your friends back home and you start using some casual jargon that nobody outside of your circle of friends really know, they're not gonna get it. So try to simplify your language a little bit more, speak slowly, and speak more clearly so that you avoid getting misunderstood. And especially with your manager or your supervisor, you don't want to have any like misunderstandings and then it ends up that 
you make a mistake or they make a mistake because there was just a thing that just got lost in translation. Tip number six. And tip number six is actually really just like my, my mantra for teaching in general. If you aren't having fun, they aren't having fun. And what I mean is you gotta just enjoy what you're doing. And if you go up there with a, with a really terrible attitude, it's going to reflect in the people that you work with. It's going to reflect in your students. They're gonna have a terrible attitude too. So that's why a lot of these positions, especially for teachers, want energetic and genki in native English speakers to be in their staff because they want someone that's going to bring the energy and then bring the energy back out so that the kids or students will enjoy and they'll want to come back again and again and again. And that's part of the business. If you go in wanting to have fun and you have fun, then they're going to have fun too. It's as simple as that. The same thing goes with your coworkers. If you are friendly to them, they should be friendly to you. And if they aren't friendly to you, and maybe that's just their personality. So just be respectful of that. Don't catch any feelings just because they're not as friendly as you are to them. Tip number seven, work hard, play hard. It sounds really dumb, but that's how it is. Work is tough. I know, I've been teaching almost every day for the past six years. But it's all the more satisfying once you finish that work, you get to the weekend, you go out to your to the bar, you go out to the club, or you just might want to just sit at home uh, with a nice cold beer and sit in front of Netflix. You have to remember that you're in another country. Enjoy it. Go out and do stuff. I met so many great people, Japanese and foreigner, that have just enlightened my life here. Before coming to Japan, I was a real homebody. Like, I was staying at home all the time, on my computer, doing art, playing games, watching anime, and I wasn't really getting anywhere, even with my job search. I was actually lucky to find my first job in Japan. But after coming to Japan, I've started going out, I started going to the the bar, the club, I've, I'm even friends with some of the guys that own said bars and clubs and I just know so many people and it's so wonderful to be kind of like on this international scale of friendship. Some people are coming from a background where they lived in one city all their life and they on, the only friends they have are the people in that one city or town and it's just so sad because there's such a big world out there. You are living in another culture. So go enjoy it. All right, guys, those are my top tips for working in Japan, especially for your first year working here. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe right here down below. And if you have any questions that you want to know about living in Japan, working in Japan, comment right down below because I would love to hear what you guys have to say and what you want to know so I can possibly have another video for it. Alright guys, that's all. I hope you have an okay day.